project that was rezoned to P uh, Planning Development District by the Lodge County Board of Commissioners in January, I'm sorry, in July of 2018. Uh, that rezoning application um, number was REZ 2018-14. In, in that uh, approval, the Lodge County Board of Commissioners approved the PD, uh, a plan development district with a 8 feet uh, side yard setback. Um, since the approval of this um, request, Mr. Jerry Stoker, the owner operator of Stoker Development LLC, has contacted the zoning office um, with the request to reduce the side yard setbacks from the approved eight feet to that of five feet uh, for side yards for each lot within the subdivision. Uh, this will be uh, a 35 uh, single family residential lot uh, development. Any questions from the board? Um, the eight feet that's a standard in PD or that was special to this? There is no standard in uh, ordinance. They get to decide. So uh, when they submitted their site plan to which they're bound, they agreed to eight feet and that's what was resolved on that plan? Yes. yes. That is what was approved. Yes. Thank you. I've got a quick question. Yes. There was a note in here about um, staff recommended approval. Reducing the time. That's requirement, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Follow that. Lines County Board of Commissioners condition regarding the construction of fences and the dwelling units. What do you, do you know what that requirement was? You have to uh, forgive me, Attorney Brantley. I'm not familiar with that, so I'm sure that Mr. Carvalho will speak on that issue for you. Okay. I've got a question. Yes, sir. Um, I was looking at the fire department. Yes, sir. When they look at these sign yard setbacks, is there a footage that they will draw a line to? Again, Ms. Nancy, I've heard of projects with five yard uh, side yard setbacks. Uh, but what I can regulate, uh, uh, fire concerns normally say, how are we going to get in around between the various structures? Other questions? Ah. Do you want to proceed to the next one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Coventry Drive and Mulligan. Uh, 
on the Mulligan side, it is depicted on a uh, survey plaque that was submitted. There's a, a 10 foot easement of sort along Mulligan. Uh, zoning, the zoning office and zoning staff is of the consent that those, uh, those lots are on the exterior boundary of this property and that they should carry that 30 foot um, setback. Mr. Mr. Stoker, in this instance, instance would like to ask that that 10 foot width, um, which will encompass that utility area, would be the uh, standard building setback for these two lots. Therefore, on, um, in this situation, he's asking for a variance of 20 feet uh, to both those uh, lots. I would like to uh, go on record as saying that uh, I spoke with the zoning administrator regarding these two uh, to, to see if there was any other available options there. And I do believe that uh, she said that uh, she she could work with Mr. Stoker in regards to implementing um, an administrative waiver, which will give him uh, a 20% relief uh, from the requirement of 30, which would give him the 24 Set back uh, versus the Any Does the applicant hear a representation who wishes to speak on behalf of this? I am. My name is Matt Phelps. Uh, I'm the engineer representing uh, Mr. Stoker. Uh, my address is 4560 at Balmore Drive. Uh, a couple questions I heard, uh, Mr. Brantley, about the fence requirement. The, what that is discussing is uh, people fence their rear guards. Uh, sometimes on larger lots, they run the fence between the houses a portion of the side yards. Uh, in this case, uh, the fire department said if we go to five feet, as long as the fences don't come beyond the rear corner of the house, they're okay. And the reason being is, well, safety is one of them, and also allows if there is a fire, and typically the uh, power meters on the side of the house, that way they're guaranteed that we get to it, shut the power off. So rather than run the fence between yeah. the property line about halfway up and then come over and tie it to the house. Yes, it would be strictly Just straight up behind there. the house at all. It would be fenced. Okay. It could not come between the houses into the side okay. uh, And that has been approved on uh, numerous subdivisions actually directly adjacent to us. Uh, Cover Creek subdivisions in one of them, uh, Barrington. Glen Marl subdivision phase one, two, and three. Those are all at five foot side yard setbacks. Um, and that was actually the, the condition the board commissioner spoke of. Um, if this gets changed, we need to maintain that and bring that forward from all the other developments to make sure that's maintained for safety concerns. Um, basically, so that was, that was my one comment on that. Um, is to maintain, like staff said, they want to maintain safety. I think that will, as long as that condition is in there, that, that should be satisfied. Um, I have a question. Yeah. What year was Glen Morrill developed? What year was Glen Morrill? What year was Glen Morrill? I don't recall. <laughs> uh, we should start at about 2009. Everything is uh, Barrington subdivision. 
Uh, they were reported in about what, five years, about six years ago, moving forward. That, that includes uh, Barrington subdivision, which is 33 building lots. That includes Glen Laurel, which is 94, and uh, Coventry, which includes 35. And then also in Gramercy subdivision, um, that is on PD, but in, in uh, Gramercy, those lots were 80 foot wide, and it was only an eight foot side yard setback on an 80 foot lot. So, but all together, about six years, and we're still building them. Yes, ma'am. What year was the building on is the is the issue and the main reason for this request that you want to put a lot of house in? Yes, be able to get at least one car garage. Um, just talking to some builders at this point, we got ready to you know five star purchase lots. They're saying that the eight foot is severely restricting them to what. They feel they want to do the market's on um, demand and want in there. Um, they need that one car garage, and this will give them an extra, an extra six feet width um, to make this uh, a more feasible, desirable house for them. Right. Um, what do you, what makes this plan? You're the developer for those others that you. Um, mentioned Gramercy and all of them, they all have five foot. Yes, Why did you not ask for a five foot from the commissioners? At the time, there was discussions, it was back and forth with staff, discussions on what we could get approved um, for, for PDs only at that time. Um, I think that the fire department, you know, had been previously approved and reported on the subdivision class, actually. They was, wavering on that whether they want to allow it or not again and we said well, okay we can make this and move forward and come back at a later date and, and, and work all this out in, in this format and that's the route we decided to take okay well so it's my understanding that when you want to change your pd you go back through the planning process you don't come here this that you go and you get your pd changed through, okay. through planning and zoning. So is there some reason why you didn't do that? I think this would be considered a minor change to the PD, which doesn't require the Board of Commission approval. It but it's a way that you could do it. You could say, we have this different PD, we want to do five foot instead, and have the commissioners that would be I, deemed recorded. I guess in theory it could go that way, but the code says it should come here. And I've never seen one of these before, that's why I asked. Okay, thank you. Okay. following directions of staff. <laughs> when Glenn Laurel and these others were developed with these five set setbacks, were they originally set out as five feet and then later changed accordingly? I mean, were they set out as five, five feet or yes, were they set they out as set eight five. and then later on, y'all came before the Board of Appeals at that time? That to they change. were set at five feet. And all that was approved. And then uh, I can't say anything other than sometimes opinions change as you go down through time. And, and this was something that was kind of wishy washy at the moment. And there was deadlines that needed to be stuff that needed to be turned in. So we said we can address this at a later date and then let's see if you away. Some questions about those two lots. Okay, sure. um, they sit on the end of the corner. I rode past there the other day. They're the two corner lots at the entrance, yes, yes. and they're on the main road and they're on the little entry to the which way will the house face? The interior Coventry Drive, the interior. So this is a side yard. This would be a side, side yard, yard issue. Yes, so we want to be able to have the side yard fence be way over there. What are we? What are we going for? What are, what's the issue with the setback? on the side yard there. You're going to build the house all the way up to the road? Uh, well, there's a 10-foot easement uh, on the lot, so the house would has to be at least 10 feet away, which is basically what we're asking for, the easement line and setback line would be one of the same. 
So they'll set right on the edge of the Potentially, it could be 10 feet from the right of way, which is still another 10, 12 feet or so from the road itself. But um, just asking, did all the other lots have five foot setbacks in that subject? Right. Well, see, here, here's, here, here's when, when developers are laying up and mites are coming, we've heard a lot of cases where developers will come and go, well, but it's on the corner, it's special. Um, what you knew when you were developing, that it was going to be on the corner and it was going to be special. So you could have moved everybody down a little bit or made them a little smaller or done them in some different way because you knew that there would be corner lots when you started out. And you knew what the setback would be when you started out. No? Okay. Or is well, this a surprise? Uh, no, I will say I was not actually the engineer for that particular one, so I'm playing catch up on this one a little bit. Uh, Whoever the engineer was knew what the setback on that lot would be. And yes, ma'am, you're right. And all of the plats, <coughs> resorted plats at the courthouse, let a the setback and the east end of easement. The ten foot easement is the setback. There, there's not a larger thirty foot setback recorded on those lots. Um, and that's where there's actually I, I, I'm not sure what's honestly happened on this particular subdivision. Um, because, like I said, I wasn't involved from day one. But all of the lots, uh, Ms. Deborah mentioned the, in a PD, there's a 30 foot setback around the perimeter. Right. Well, all of the lots are reported with a 20 foot setback. Well, is this a PD or no? It is a PD. But they're all reported with a 20 foot okay. setback. These are actually the flats right here, if you want to see. Um, so, it's okay, I'm okay. not really sure what's, what has happened in there over time. Um, to be honest, uh, even the what was put in the packet here show, shows that as um, 20 foot rear and five feet on the side and, and this is Except for the perimeter. No, the perimeters are shown as 20. I don't know why, but they yeah. are. And all the houses. I'm, I'm gonna call them different. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, try to give an exact answer to that uh, because I was not privy to the, the review process. But I will say it sounds as, as if perhaps staff dropped the ball. And, and I will accept responsibility for that. Uh, and, and perhaps the, the, the flat was able to be recorded as such. But it is written in the code that uh, with the project that uh, all exterior lines, instructions would have to be at least a minimum of 30 feet from Again, since the uh, not being privy to uh, the adoption of the OBC and the consultant and the staff, staff, staff that was involved, their, their um, reasoning, I can't try to answer that. And I honestly don't know. I would think for um, safety purposes. Well, I was wondering if there with the fact that y'all can give an administrative waiver down to 26 feet, if it has anything to do with road widening down the, you know, in the future. Uh, with it then varying from 24 to 26 because it's um, a connector road and they're more apt to be widened, maybe down the, or have to be widened. I don't know. Do you know where I'm Yes, I do. I do not know if there's any future proposal to wind uh, either of those roads. Not that there would be a proposal to do it now, but the more it develops, the greater the need becomes for a wider road to accommodate the traffic. Yes. Okay. And if you don't have but 10 feet, where are you going? Right. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Speaking of that, yes. there's a 60 foot right of way currently in Baldwin Road. There's a 60 foot right of way, which is more than enough to handle an additional lane of traffic, potentially to uh, if there is um, Seriously, that will be in the location of that road, and that would never happen. Um, but I suppose it's possible. 
Um, I will say that this particular subdivision, this, this plan development, had lots of things that were, I'll say, out of the ordinary. Um, typically, lots on subdivisions like this have the front, the interior, new small residential streets. Uh, there's a whole row of houses that were allowed to run into Mulling Road, the main road. Um, so that's atypical of what typically um, of other subdivisions plan development. Um, like I said, everything's flattered, 20 foot rear, 5 foot setbacks on the side, um, except for a few lots had eight for some reason. There was a lot of conditions involved in this um, that, that did follow the standard normal PD regulations. So I'm thinking there's just been something that if you got lost in translation over time, and, and um, so basically what, what they're asking for is basically call the plan that's recorded in the courthouse. Essentially, it's what's being asked for. So, um, any other questions? Any other questions? Let me try that again. We do have some people right there. If there's anybody else here in support of this application that would like to speak? Yes, I'm Jerry Stoker. Uh, I'm the developer. My address is 4836 Oak Harbor. Uh, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Lorenzo, Wayne Lorenzo, Mr. Jim Bauer, Ms. Sharon Bauer, and Ms. Uh, Linda Zahn. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Zahn, and this is her son, Wayne, uh, they, their property backs up, uh, both, both parties, their property backs up, they're coming to Villas. And when we did the development, uh, in the zoning process, uh, I went to them, of course, told them what my plans were to do, and of course, they all, or down here now to support about this side of our barracks. I, I don't want to get into the politics of what happened uh, because that doesn't do any good. The fact of the matter is that um, we have done five foot side yard setbacks for the last six to eight years. It's always been that way. Uh, in the last couple of years, there's been a meeting back and forth about uh, the fire department not wanting this and the fire department not wanting that. But there's never been, and this is just my suggestion to the county, and I made this suggestion to the county engineer. The plat, going back to the two lots, the plat was recorded. We made some concessions with the county as far as running water and sewer to the rear of Carpentry Subdivision uh, to accommodate the nine-acre commercial site at my expense. The county also wanted uh, parking spaces on the, uh, in the subdivision that uh, was adjacent to the playground. Um, I argued that point because basically, and I'm trying to get to why we're here now, Basically, I was opposed to that because basically what has happened is when you do a PD development, uh, Lowndes County basically now is required to do some type of amenity area for the rest of us. I have no problem with that. I think it's, I think it's great. That money is spent by me, not the county. However, uh, in Coventry's situation, I made the amendments to the county sidewalks were put in, the parking lots were put in, and now we have a problem where all the residents from other areas use the playground because we can't stop it because we have parking that's adjacent to a county approved street. So uh, that's one problem. The concessions uh, with the fire department, uh, and it is recorded on the plats, in all the classes that we have done in the last six or seven years, is the fire department basically does not want you to do a, a fence in front, to say this is a house, 
and this is the front of the house, they do not want a fence on the front of the house. And I and I agree for that. So the concession with the fire department over the last six to eight years, uh, and it's been going longer than that, but I'm just saying just for this development area, uh, we noted on the plan at the planning um, and zoning office's recommendations also that we put the fence to the rear of the houses with a gate. And of course, we've never had a problem. Uh, and we, we, did, we did put it on the plats. And then all of a sudden, when we went to the zoning on this piece of property, you know, there seemed to be some politics involved about, well, are we gonna do eight foot, are we gonna do five foot? The PD development, the side yard setbacks are basically at the discretion of the developer as long as it's agreed upon with the zoning uh, and the zoning uh, people here in Lowndes County. So, again, we've, we've got recorded plats of the five foot side yard setbacks. Uh, it's been done. Uh, why all of a sudden it's changed? I do not have an answer to that. Uh, I will say on the two lots, on lots 19 and 20, those lots were recorded. We made, obviously, some concessions to the county. We, uh, the county let us put, I think it was six houses on the front of Logan, and we agreed in, on those six lots to do an eight-foot side yard setback. The reason being is because the county did not want the people who live in those homes to back their car up on Mud and Road. They wanted a, a little extra side yard where we could put a concrete driveway, kind of a side drive, where they back out of the yard, they could kind of back up and then head forward out on Mud and Road. <coughs> that concession was made on lots 32 through 36 in, uh, in the subdivision. Um, If the county never bought up the 30 foot right away until a builder came down to buy the lots and the builder was told that he could not purchase the lots because they weren't buildable and of course that's why we're here today. The county imposed a one foot non-encroachable easement on the front of lots 19 and 20. And the reason why that easement was put there was so those lots could not face Mulligan Road. The county did not want those two lots facing Mulligan Road. They wanted them to be interior lots. We agreed. My whole argument is this. If the county at the time we were doing the development wanted a 30-foot side yard setback on these two lots, then at that time we, and I don't know this for a fact, we probably could have adjusted those lots and put them facing Mother Road like the other six lots and took a little footage out of the lots on the interior to make up for that that was not done. So now we're sitting here with a recorded plan saying that lots 19 and 20 are to have a five yard side yard setback and a 10 foot utility easement. And basically we're being told that they're not buildable. So that's where we're at. Um, I, I would say the only purpose if we have to do an eight foot side yard setback in Coventry Villas, then it leads to a smaller shotgun house. And I'm sure you're all aware, every time I come before, and I'm sure Ms. Carmel and Ms. Diddy will agree, every time we come in front of the county and the um, planning commission for PD zonings, the word is, we don't want a blue pool house. We don't want blue pool houses. 
So we're here now today trying to eliminate having blue pool houses because on an eight foot size of our setback, the most any builder can get is a one car garage. That, that, that's it. It's to be a 34 foot wide house. These people do not want one car garage shotgun houses and that's why they're here today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Is there anybody else here? Anybody else here in support of this case? Yes, I'm Connie Crowell. I live in a couple of buildings. I have that area with the two white buildings right you see up there. Been there 20 something years, and everybody that's back here has been there longer. Uh, we don't want the small houses. It takes away from our property value and everything else. And I understand what he says about the play area, and there's a play area that's due to be wild to the north of that white building you set there. And, and I agree with the people coming in and using it and coming through our yards and coming into our yards. So the structure's got a nice layout and I, I like the program that he's got done. And I, I would rather see a larger house or property value of our property and all the surrounding properties around it than having some little shotgun house put in there with one car garage. And I don't see where that variance should be stopped. I think it should go with what it is on that. We all support that. So I'd like to thank you for your time and let you know that we are in support. Yes, Thank you, sir. If I could, I would like to make a note. I'm sorry. Can I tell you? Yes. I would like to make a note for a record that Mr. Powell. Is the entire military fire chief at Moody Air Force Base. So, my name is Linda Son, and I live at 388 Old Pine Road. I've lived out there since 1987, and uh, I was the previous owner of the property. Um, I am here to say that I support a larger home. Um, I do not want a blue pool home back there. Um, and it's my belief and my opinion that a larger home would be more attractive to a family that is looking to purchase a home in that area. And Venus is a thriving area and is still a thriving area. And so I'm just here to show that I support a larger home and that I'm hopeful that this will be approved. Thank you. This is my son. He may want to speak. She said everything. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. One question. Oh, question. If this foxhood is approved, what is the difference in this? square feet of the house. I'm sorry, I don't hear well. You know, what's the difference in the square feet? The square footage, if it's an eight foot easement or a five foot. Uh, oh, no, no. Now, you could, you could build a two-story house, but that's not food. To do here, but on a, on a, on a single, on a one car garage house, you're looking probably somewhere between 1250 and 1325. Uh, that means your house would be roughly 34 feet wide by 55 feet deep, so to speak. If you did a two car garage, and I did not bring the plan with me. But I have uh, hired an architectural firm. I, I, I have five house plans for the, for, for the variance, if, if you approve. I have five house plans now being drawn by Cornerstone Design. Uh, they're 40 foot wide by up to 58 to 59 feet deep. And they run anywhere from 1375 up to 1545. Um, I have hired an architect firm out of uh, Kennesaw called Frank Betts. And some of you are familiar with Frank Betts. Uh, they're one of America's premier um, 
architects for homes, design homes, and they are designing four homes specifically for their subdivisions, and I have to buy the license, and there, those homes will not be able to be built anywhere else in Lowndes County unless they're licensed with Frank Betts. But those houses are Frank Betts home. Uh, they were running 1400 up to about 1565 roughly. Can we talk I would really like to know why the commission approved eight foot rather than five foot. Why why did we have this be a non-standard? It came through planning and zoning at eight feet. Eight, uh, planning and zoning was recommending eight feet. Then instead of five feet, we've been doing five feet all this time. Can, can we phone the commissioner? We probably need to table the meeting and bring it back up at the next meeting in order if if the decision is to do some more research on information. Chairman, if I may, the commission approved eight feet because that was presented to them. Five feet wasn't presented to them. If right. I'm well, answering your question. Okay, but it, was five feet ever presented to planning originally? <clears throat> not in the public hearing. No, no, not in the public hearing. But, but I think in the planning at the TRC was five feet presented, and and the staff said no, you should do eight feet. I wasn't at the meeting, but I believe Mr. Stoker and the previous planner discussed five feet. I think that was what you originally wanted. Five feet. Andy County Planner recommended eight. I wasn't at the meeting, but that's my I'm curious as to why you recommended eight feet with these other subdivisions at five feet. Yeah, that's that's why I got my questions. Well, of course you all know the previous plan is not here. I can't answer that. I can't answer that question. This is the original preliminary plat that was submitted to the planning and zoning. And in that plat, it shows five feet. And also, you were asking about the furniture bills. The, yes. Not the two I, I can't see that. I need my magnifiers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm asking about the villas. Were they presented to the hand dancers? Yes, they were presented to staff as five, and staff recommended eight, and that's what the commissioners approved. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. That's what we were told by staff at the time. Okay. Objections to the fire, but that's all we can get through. We have to come back and do this at a okay. later date. And, and your other choice is to go back with that plan to the commissioners and say, we want to modify our PD. How much does that cost? Um, about $600. And how much does this cost? Four, fifteen, five hundred. dollars about the same. I don't know. Either way, to pay. I like the place of straightforward. I like to tell it like it is. I've always been like that. I wear my lotion on my sleeves, and I'm going to tell it just like it is. We have people who represent non development in this area. I'm not talking about. I'm sorry, I'm not going to have you know that. They don't want to know. The, 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 the problem that we have is that we have people who are making these decisions that have a I want list. And that's okay. I don't have a problem. I have been over many, many times to accommodate. It should be a win-win situation for the county, me, and the, and the public. However, we have people making decisions, or, and they did make decisions, and still making decisions that have a want list. My suggestion to this committee and to Lowndes County, going forward, if it is in black and white 
that you can do a five foot side yard setback, then you give us a five foot side yard setback. Don't come up with an eight foot or ten foot because you don't like me or you don't like the area or you just, it's, it's politics. That's, that's all this is, it's politics. My suggestion to the fire department, if you want eight foot, then put it in writing and let it be eight foot, and then from now on, when we get ready to go to a development, we won't be down here doing it. That's just strictly my suggestion. Something has to be in writing, not I won't. And that's why we have this problem there. Thank you. Do you feel you have information necessary for your decision? I do. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> is there anybody else here? Are there, I'm sorry. Are there any other questions of? Is there anybody else here in favor? No. Is there anybody else here in opposition to this variance? <clears throat> um, was there any contact made um, to there your was office? There a couple of phone calls to so just inquire and, and confirm what the variance was. Okay. What well, was us? <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> open the table for a motion. Is there anybody who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Are we doing one of the variance requests at a time, or do you both them? Uh, we can either handle it each individually. I think they all both need to be put together eventually, but they you can I think your motion can be addressed to in each one separately within the same motion. Okay, well I'll, I'll give it a shot on variance request number one first. I make a motion on variance request number one to approve the request conditioned upon the finish requirement recommended by the board of commissioners that the fences be Built at the back of the house rather than all the way up to the front. Um, and regard to, uh, other than that one condition, uh, just add a request. Um, citing criteria D. Anything on the second? Um, yeah, I'll make one on the second also. So on the second, um, I make a motion that variance request number two be granted as presented citing criteria to you. Okay. Do we have a second? I'm sorry. I've got a question. Okay. I thought we were going to vote on the individual. I'd rather vote on the individual. Can we vote on the individual? Can we break it? Yes. Okay. So we'll separate. So first motion we had was on the was on the subdivision. Uh, regarding the fences, approval regarding the fences uh, up to the back side of the house. You got a question? No, I have a second. Okay, all right. Do we have a second? There was a second. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? So the first, first portion of the variance passes. Um, do we have a motion on the second portion of the total variance? Um, I make a motion to approve with, rather than a 26 foot setback, a 20 foot. Okay. Do we have a second? I second that. So a 20 foot variance rather than 26 foot. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit less. Oh, I'm not sure I understand. We're talking about that blocks 19, 20. Uh -huh. Yes. A 20 foot setback? Rather than 26. Rather than 26. But we already have a, a yeah. we have a 10 foot. We have a 30 now. And they can change it to 26, but we're going to change it. It won't work. But we have a 2nd uh, A second. We have a second. Uh, do we have a vote? All those in favor? Two in favor, all those against. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I will vote against. Uh, so the motion does not pass. Do we have another motion on the second portion of the variance? I make the same motion that I. I made. So, so reverse the variance request number two. No motion. I make a motion that that variance request be granted as presented, citing criteria. Okay. We have a second. All those in favor? All those against? <laughs> ah. um, I'll vote in favor. Uh, second, second portion of the total variance passes. Do we need to give you any further explanation? Is that, is that clear as mud? <laughs> I think it's bad. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, if, if need be, let the record show Mr. Strickland is coming back to the table for this. Um, This is case uh, APP, Valosta case APP 2018-09, Wiley Myers, 2528 Melrose Drive. Ms. Tracy. Thank you. Before, we, before you start, hold on a second. Because apparently we have nobody here from the applicant. Yes. Good. Were you aware that they were not going to be here? No, I was not. I reminded them of the day to inquire, the day to come. I reminded them again when I posted the sign and called them this morning and let them know that I was with them. Well, I went and looked at it Sunday and talked to his wife and told her, I said, now we need to see y'all Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And where I'm coming from is in the past, when we've not had anybody from the applicant here, there's always been a little discussion to we act without them having a chance to put in. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions, so I would like to. I would like to say. We have a motion to table. Second. Do we have a second? Okay, who is the motion to table? Okay. Correction. I lost. No, I'm sorry, I'm moving too fast. <laughs> so, uh, we had a second. All those in favor? I think that's it. Um, I didn't get any minutes. Yes, there was no minutes for today. Yeah, I will take responsibility for that. My nephews were not in row and they did not get finished. My apologies. They will be finished for your next month. Is there any other business that we need to discuss? Anyone? I believe that's it. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do I just press stop here? Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay.